Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of State of the YouTube. Today, we are here with a very special guest. We are here with Chris, the founder and creator of the Cyanide and Happiness webcomic. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And more than a webcomic, too, because you, you have, what, you said a TV show. Well, yeah, we uh, we have a series that we do, a uh, full series uh we have three seasons available. It's on uh, VRV, so it's uh, through NBC there. And uh, yeah, we do the daily comic and more than weekly stuff on YouTube, including uh, an animated short, whatnot. God damn, man, that's so much work. Yeah, it is. But we work with a lot of talented people, so uh, you know, it's it's basically that situation where you have to suck dick for so long to get somewhere on the <laughs> internet, and then finally comes around to where you get your dick sucked. Now, yeah, the right. Cyanide and Happiness YouTube channel. I remember coming back from coming back home from school every day in like elementary and middle school and watching those shorts on YouTube. And I remember them being very funny. My favorites were uh, the beer one and oh, yeah. the the one where the bus can't go below yeah. 60 miles per hour is the parody <laughs> of that one movie. Waiting for the Speed bus. Those are really classics, funny. man. Thank you. Yeah. So wait, wait, you started the uh, the web comic in 2004. Yeah, two thousand around two thousand late two thousand four, uh, early two thousand five, oh, and then we started and, uh, the the Explosion website in two thousand six. Okay, all right, because I I, I kind of remember uh, Sinai and Happiness always being around for I, yeah I guess I was halfway through high school at the time and shit I didn't realize it had been that long, and so you're pretty well established at this point. Yeah, well I mean uh, yeah we uh, you know kind of tried to cast a wide net and we did the comics for a little while before moving to animation since we all kind of met as animators we were like new grounds babies stuff like that and, and so it was you and two others i started the comic uh when i was in high school as well and uh then basically posted them on uh my buddy rob's forum okay. and uh he got for he had a website called stick suicide at the time where we just did violent animations and uh, <laughs> uh stick man animation of course classic time on oh the yeah <laughs> man, it was an era and uh yeah he got a hold of me and he's basically saying they wanted to start up this new website that wasn't just strictly stick figure violence and uh so we started up explosive and it didn't fall too far from the tree i mean still violent animations and what have you how how long was it before it started taking off, or was it pretty much like uh, uh, solid from the start? It uh, when before Explosum was started up with uh, mm -hmm. you know doing it with uh, Rob, Matt, and Dave, um, it uh, got a little bit of uh, of attention through. I mean, mostly we caught uh, we were right at the wave of MySpace and everything, and right. we were one of the only comics that would let people hyperlink to our images. You know, we didn't give a shit. We just want people to read it. And, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so uh, it was about, I'd say about uh, two years in, we were getting a pretty good audience, um, mostly just if they hadn't, if they weren't regular readers, they were at least finding a page on MySpace or seeing it shared around and stuff, and it was getting getting some traction at that point. Were you doing daily comics back then as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have no concept of how you can possibly do a daily Comic. Yeah, what is the process of coming up with like I don't know if you're doing three panels or like different every time, but like coming up with a a new little joke every single day. Yeah, well, it helps that there's uh, currently three of us, so we can rotate a little bit. So we each do about two a week, and then there's an animation. And uh, but uh, the process, I mean, it varies. You know, like uh, there's times where you'll have a backlog of ideas, and you can uh, work on them, or maybe you want to spend time on. A particular idea so you push that to the back burner and stuff but uh and sometimes it's just you know you're there night of and you know you get you got nothing and you gotta make something anyway you gotta you know yeah show yeah up. so i was thinking about that i mean there, there's got to be some some duds in there i mean i haven't seen any duds every every one of uh the cyanide and happiness you know uh comics that i read they seem or funny or at least solid it's not like uh, some of the Garfield comics that just fall flat and they have <laughs> there's no punchline or anything. How dare you? There's not a single unfunny Garfield comic. <laughs> Shout out Jim Davis. Do you see the one when he can't find yeah. his pipe? Yeah. There's a Garfield comic where uh, uh, John accidentally drinks dog jizz. 
<laughs> yeah, it's see that's funny. <laughs> that's pretty that's funny. funny. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it a search; it'll come up quick. But uh, oh, shit. <laughs> that's generous of you, man. Thanks. Uh, you know, like it's it's hard to say like something that you definitely learned because uh, at the end of the day, it is a lot of sketch comedy. We don't do we don't do a whole lot of references uh, or memes or you know not very often. But uh, you know, like there's there's comics that you'll make and uh you'll you'll hate them but then they're a bunch of people's favorites and vice versa and uh you know it's a lot of it is about the attempt you know like even if you feel like you sure. got nothing like there's there's times when you know it's like shit i uh don't have time to do the com- the comic i want and uh got to make one now and sometimes you just got to jump into it anyway and uh well, a, lo- a lot of good stuff's come out of it but you know it's it's true really it's subjective like you'll like it's considering we post on our like our comics and animations on a lot of different websites you see a lot of varying reactions and uh some things will do really well on a particular website and shit like uh-huh. you know, something will kill it on instagram that everyone else hates or something like that you know well that's one of my big questions is especially back in those you know early days when you're just making these uh, comics and and posting, you know, hyperlinks and images on the internet. How do you transition into monetizing that? Because it's so easy for anybody to just download that and post it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, How do you, how do you turn that into an income? Well, definitely, uh, you know, it's like with old school internet and what we were doing with uh, stick figure websites and stuff, we were all in school and stuff, but we're still managing to make a bit of money. Like I was doing a lot of freelance animator jobs or, uh sound design or illustration and stuff uh when the comic was first gearing up but banner ads on websites uh they they are the 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 best really uh income you can really come across aside from a storefront um when you when you're just Mm. doing a website and uh honestly it i think it was back in 2009 that's when we had our first technical like adpocalypse with google Oh shit! Yeah, we had yeah. Uh, rent- even back then they were pulling this garbage. Yeah, no, this, Wasn't, this stuff keeps what, happening. I think it'll k- keep doing this. It just uh, changes I, platforms. In two thousand nine, was that the big thing where everyone was scamming um, the the Google ads and everyone had a blog spot and uh, they would put ads on it and people would just go to each other's blog spots and click on a hundred ads a day or something. I remember there was a big scam right. that uh, a lot of people were kind of getting in on and then they they cracked down quickly afterwards and i think that might have been around the same time it was around there um i remember what you're talking about I th- and i think that was around the same time but it wasn't exactly the cause of what we ran into back then which uh okay was google started using an algorithm and it was reading our text so we you know had their we had their ad service for a couple years and mm. uh it, and it was good and then we started getting these automated flags where they wouldn't support ads on a particular comic because of some of the keywords it would bring up through the the text and we're like okay we know what's going to happen here but let's appeal it we appealed it (laughs) so that's really interesting yeah exactly you're saying there's this whole google keyword automated system yeah way back before (laughs) most people on youtube even had access right to adsense yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it would, the, the, it would just kind of read the font on the image uh, automatically and go off that. So we appealed and we knew what was going to happen, which it did that, you know, as soon as we got that appealed and they said, okay, that's fine. It automatically flagged the next comic and the next one and the next <laughs> okay, one. Okay, so, so the we same had to drop thing. Them. You're, you're, automa- you're just put in this box where they're like, all right, these people are making comics that uh, uh, have words we don't like, so everything's going to be automatically flagged. Right. Going forward. Same thing that we've been seeing on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, same kind of machine learning problems. So I I found this comic. Oh, I was going to say real quick, uh, which means, you know, you might be the shining example that we all should look up to because despite, you know, even 10 years ago, the Google overlords trying to use their algorithm to shut you down and say, you don't deserve to make money because we don't like this kind of comedy. Right. But now you have like an empire of cyanide and happiness and you're sponsored by, yeah, you're working with what you said, NBC on the Verve app and all these different things. That's right. So you are like, maybe 10 years from now, we'll all be... Uh, doing okay who knows yeah you've beat the system in a sense cyanide happiness seems bigger than the system it's too established right right it helps and you know from the from early on as i'm sure you know a lot of people have heard his uh, advice that i definitely can attest to is you know you got you can't be you can't be big on one website you got to spread out 
you got to have your own home base, you know, right. You got to, you got to diversify and make sure that, uh, if you're taken down on one thing, you have a hub somewhere else. And, uh, you know, we over the years established a little bit of, uh, of a grandfathering where, you know, um, Twitch will allow us and knows what we do. So we're not going to get brought down unjustly, you know, this far anyway. And do do you uh, remember what the things were that, that Google uh, initially were flagging you for? Yeah. Uh, first it was, uh, flagging, um, the, I think the first one that got picked up was something about finger banging and, uh, (laughs) and it would, you know, kind of move on to the next comic, which I think had something to do with, um, I think it had something to do with, uh, Jewish people or something. And, uh, then it just kind of, you know, it seemed to find something on almost all of our comics that it would. So ping. Google is anti-Semitic. Yeah. Google doesn't <laughs> like Jewish people. Yeah. You cannot sponsor Jewish content. <laughs> uh, I did find this, this, um, Garfield comic where Jim, not Jim Davis, but Jim is, uh, or John is drinking. <laughs> it's autobiographical. Yeah. Jim did this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, what you know. <laughs> yeah, so what he goes to a vet and uh he's like, "Ooh, a cup of coffee." Yep. Oh, why? Uh, you know, <laughs> if I don't say so or whatever, I'll I'll just drink it. And uh, he's at the vet and uh the the veterinarian says, "You're going to give birth to fine healthy litter of puppies." <laughs> it's, it's just implied that he just drank a cup of uh, dog juice. I think that also, that's, I don't know that, if he knows how pregnancy works. Yeah, so that's edgy. I wonder if Google would have allowed ads on that comic. <laughs> I don't think they would. Uh, <laughs> or maybe they'd let it slip by, you know, but any any other kind of uh, joke with a swear they'd take down. I think that that's implying that there's some sort of experiment going on in that vet's office where through <laughs> oral ingestion, he can give birth to uh, these right. experimental puppies. Well, interspecies birth and a man giving birth too. It's a wild, wild experiment. <laughs> but I mean, realistically, this is John's fault. He should not have just walked up to an operating table, grabbed a cup, which I don't even know why they have a cup of dog jizz on the table. So it's kind of their why fault. Why does a too? cup of jizz look like yeah. coffee? Yeah. I don't know. Why are they keeping <laughs> dog jizz in coffee cups? Why are they leaving it out? I don't know. It's like a specimen thing. John's just a fucking idiot. Let's yeah. just be honest. Here. Oh, yeah. I think we can all agree Jim Davis is uh he's the greatest comic writer of all time. <laughs> Absolutely, man. He he walks that line. He finds the edge. Yeah. Chris, have you seen um uh Lasagna Cat? Oh, of course. Love it. Oh, did yeah. you watch that that the one they just came out with or it was the one that was it was the the phone sex operator big uh, call in service. Yeah, I was on it. I was on it. I called in. Oh, I were you? called the number. I gave uh, my number of sexual partners, and uh, I'm in there. <laughs> cool. I'll have to watch for that. <laughs> yeah, I'll have watch, to watch all it five through hours. the nine hour. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! But the ending was incredible. <laughs> what it a just comeback! Go derails. Um. So I I assume that uh, Jim Davis is a part of he's one of the executive producers of uh, lasagna cat as well <laughs> i would hope so <laughs> so it's fair to say that side night and happiness uh has edgy humor right yeah well, yeah dark, lot, lots of dark <laughs> it's humor. kind of the idea <laughs> yeah and and so I, I i've talked to you a little bit in dms and i'm just shocked by i think we were talking about i got my video taken down uh making light mockery of suicide. Yeah, your noose tying song, right? Yeah, and and I was like, how the fuck are you, how can you get away with this? Cuz I I see the uh the comics and in the videos you're putting out and you touch on everything. Like it's just going all the way on any subject. Right. Um and are, do you get any strikes for that or have you seen any kickback from YouTube nowadays? Or Google? Yeah, I mean, definitely. We definitely still battle with it. It it comes and goes. You know, um, like, uh, Jesus, we got a weird strike a couple weeks ago because we put a fake 900 number up on one of our videos from about a year ago. And, okay, uh, yeah. it was one of those fake 900 numbers that's impossibly long. It's it, right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we got a, we got a strike for that. Uh, yeah, we, you know, YouTube's getting a bit more sensor heavy, uh, even with us, like, uh, there's stuff that we can pull off on the VRV show that we could never do on YouTube, which, uh, kind of brings that's, this air of like traditional television is going to allow more. That's, that's so very, crazy. Yeah. It's very odd because we're always used to thinking of television as a place where you have standards and practices and on 
network television, the FCC regulates everything. Yeah. And YouTube always used to be this frontier where edgy content could thrive. But recently, in the past couple of years, they seem to have been cracking down on sort of the entire genre of edgy content harder than they ever have before. And it's it's odd. You end up with these situations with Chris where he's allowed to do stuff on a network-owned platform that he can't get away with on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, it's it's I think that YouTube is uh, forced into this situation by, you know, I think that, you know, with a lot of the uh, publicity attacks and stuff that happen on PewDiePie, I think they're more attacking YouTube and YouTube's having to respond to that and they're not doing a really great job communicating. I mean, they got to be stuck in between, uh, you know, they have to find a uh, stable representation where they can't get hit pieced so often. And then also not let people know enough where they can actually abuse the system since that's always a hunt that's happening. With yeah, it you. seems like such a, uh, a flawed thing to do that, that they're trying to just completely comb their website of anything that um, someone could possibly attack them for and then uh, eliminate it. That hunt is always going to happen. They're always going to find something. Yeah. So they're just kind of killing their fucking website. Yeah. By I, getting rid of it, all the character. I think so. I just, I, 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 it's probably not feasible, but if they, you know, there's, there's YouTube kids and all that. I, if there was a way they could make a avenue of YouTube that wouldn't have to worry about, you know, like have to worry about as strict a censorship as a more general YouTube Sure. So that's what I was thinking the other day is, you know, they came out with YouTube kids and I don't know if it flopped or what, but now they're just trying to make YouTube the new YouTube kids. Right. Yeah. And that's, maybe think, it's not for babies, but for well, I think like, YouTube kids is highly successful. I do too. Is it? There's, there's, a, if you look, if you pay attention to the top subscribed channels on the entire platform, so many of them starting in 2017, 2018 are now rapidly rising and they're just kids channels that make like simple animations and sing about nursery rhymes. Yeah. The, that's where I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go to YouTube kids. <laughs> You're too old. They won't the, let you. The kid friendly <laughs> knife game song. <laughs> the kid friendly. Yeah. Do oh, a, yeah. the spoon game song. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, the plastic spoon, you'd probably be, be able to get away with some stuff there. I mean, with the whole Elsa gate thing that happened and everything i mean a lot of that has to do with from what i understand it, it that ch uh, child programming in other cultures just isn't the same as it is right and so you know there's kids who want to see babies and knives and needles oh well <laughs> that, also, that was a funny thing uh sorry what were you saying monkey oh i was gonna say and also i think you can make way more money making kids content because a dumbass kid doesn't know what ad block is whereas our audiences all use adblock uh, relig religiously. Also, so I think it also, ad companies will pay out the ass to reach children and try to yeah. indoctrinate kids into becoming lifelong customers of their products. You're not wrong. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think we're all idiots for not just making Dude, content for it. brainless four-year-olds. I'm <laughs> doing just it. All I'm going to start. I'm making some songs with some animations and yeah, let's corrupt uh, the kids. Flashing lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> flashing well, lights. So, so one of the things with the um the you're saying like the needles and stuff in the in the YouTube kids content, I, I'd seen this about three years ago, a good year or two before it really blew up on YouTube. Uh, my buddy sent me a video, and it was like a kid song. It has Mickey Mouse, you know, um, dancing around, and they're singing like uh, how many monkeys jumping on the bed or whatever. And then halfway through the song, it starts out innocent enough, so the parent walks away. And then 10 minutes in, Mickey Mouse pulls out a chainsaw and just starts cutting the head <laughs> off of Goofy. Or like Deadpool shows up for some reason. And it's just like really creepy shit. And then it goes Real back Trojan to normal. Yes. Uh, I thought it was fucking hilarious. I love it. I love it. I'd like, I wish that uh, <laughs> that was something we could see more of. I, I was all for it as well, just seeing some of the weird stuff go up on Elsa Gate, and it was uh, more more Wild West than a lot of things you'll see on YouTube, <laughs> and so I, I was yeah. I was into it, but you know they've obviously made the crackdown on that as along oh with everything God. else. It's bad. It's it's bad. Like they're they're going through and um, flagging any video that has on my channel at least like, with knife in it. 
Like uh, I think the word knife is now. I know it's a dangerous act or whatever supports or, or promotes dangerous acts or whatever. Um, but they they have their new terms of service, which is like the vague blanket that they can use to get anyone off their website. And I think that this is something that if I was cyanide and happiness, I would be worried about. And that's content that is shocking, sensational, or disrespectful. Right. Is not allowed on their site. And that could be anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, something that I would say helps us in that situation is um, considering that it is a cartoon show and we don't, uh, you know, we're not really calling out anyone specifically by name or anything and uh you know we we didn't we never really aimed to be offensive we just kind of found out we're offensive and so our <laughs> our goal has never been what's the next darkest thing we could do or anything and uh, uh all right having a variation just, of that helps a little bit yeah I was, i'll say this uh, one of the comics uh that i just read was um the father reading his son uh, a book before oh, he went to sleep and the kid goes <laughs> Uh, does this story have a happy ending? And dad spits in his hand. He's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you want? Oh, God. <laughs> and I was like, there's no fucking way. Uh, I don't know what that was on, though. I, I forget where I read it. Right. Probably Twitter. Yeah, it could have been uh, well, Instagram or, uh, yeah, we we have a cycle. So it's one of those things. The YouTube related content, at least from what I know, is more of the animations. And yeah, right. like I said, the ones I remember from when I was a kid. They were really violent and graphic. A lot of gore, um, right. sex jokes. Oh, yeah. And it's just the same type of stuff YouTube is cracking down on now. Right. Which is crazy because if you remember a long time ago that those uh, happy tree friends, right. you know, that was the most violent thing I'd seen. YouTube made that part of their guideline video tutorials. Do you guys yeah, remember YouTube, that shit? No. YouTube copyright school featuring the happy tree friends. Holy yeah, shit. Like, what the fuck? And now they're, I bet today they would ban that channel. I mean, maybe exactly. like, uh, you know, the, there has been a couple instances where we've ran into YouTube and uh, managed to get a hold of them and get strikes lifted and things like that. Now, how do you do that? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> well, there's there's they've been uh, they've actually responded to us when we've contacted them before and been helpful. And uh, there's also, you know, it's an upside of having an MCN, you know, being on one is Fuck. they can they can take care of a lot of that for you since they're True. directly in contact with mm. youtube i think i should just start my own mcn <laughs> that just yeah. helps people who Mon- get monkey channel network <laughs> yeah it names itself yeah and you know it monkey can take place of multi-channel network so it can just be yours <laughs> just, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm the channel <laughs> is there any updates on all the bullshit going on with your channel yeah, yeah, YouTube is uh, straight up ignoring my thousands of retweets and replying to people immediately <laughs> with uh, none, so oh, man. they're going out of their way to ignore me. That's yeah, well, awful. I mean, so you had people that were kind of in the Trusted Flagger program. Two people, was it, that uh, were yeah, trying to two, get your channel two back? Two separate Trusted Flaggers told me all these strikes are null and void, and then they went to YouTube and YouTube told them uh, too bad. So, that is, that, that that's is something. Weird. That's something I think a lot of people really struggle with in this day and age where for so many youtubers they view the management of this site as just this monolithic entity who just never responds to anything never communicates anything and i was just wondering chris um what your experience sort of is with that because you've mentioned that you've been in contact with youtube and that's something that so many other youtubers desire but either they get limited to automated responses or in Mumkey's case YouTube just straight up begins to ignore them yeah I I don't understand that part specifically like uh, them doubling down on taking your keeping your channel down that that you know I've seen that happen before but just kind of not really uh uh extrapolating on the reasons or you know kind of uh, any sort of damage control as far as why I, I I it seems like they're making an example out of you or something i i yeah it does seem like that a little bit yeah i haven't really seen that happen before like i mean jesus even i mean you saw that daddy of five came back and made a couple extra channels and all that oh my yeah so right so i mean and especially yeah in the case of monkey it's it's clearly an attack that 
the average person looking at it, well, maybe not the average person. Uh, if a normie looked at it, they'd have to look at it for five minutes to realize, wow, Monkey's content is not worthy of just being eliminated from the website. With it, Did it break the terms of service? I mean, half of the strikes didn't. Yeah, Monkey and, is getting the ISIS treatment here, which is <laughs> yeah. the first time I've ever seen it applied to any channel like Monkey who wasn't doing straight up illegal stuff. Right. Makes me wish I was uh, abusing my kids on camera, you know? Sounds like uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what Daddy 05 is getting special treatment over there. <laughs> yeah, do it for YouTube kids. Yeah, why didn't I just push a kid down the stairs? I'm over here trying to make documentaries and shit. I'm so stupid. <laughs> or you can brutally murder your cat. Because that's allowed too. Yeah, that video what the still fuck up? is that? I, I hear people talking about it, but I haven't seen specifics. Someone killed their cat on YouTube? Yeah, the Spanish YouTuber uploaded a video of them literally brutally murdering their cat. And their channel is still up. That's crazy. <laughs> but that's like cultural. That's like a cultural thing like uh, cockfighting. <laughs> what in Spain? <laughs> <laughs> Bullfighting or whatever. Yeah, but, but we're Americans, so school shootings should be part of our culture, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every day that's occurs. actually a thing. That's That point you brought up, Rusty, that's actually a thing I've noticed where American content and English-speaking content gets regulated way harder than stuff in other countries. One, because I feel like Google's keywords are in English. Right. And right. They, yeah. the, the language hasn't caught up to regulate other or more international content. And oh man, I, I watch so many um, uh, goat slaughter videos. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, they're they're normally in. Well, I mean, I have I have to because I censor my words with the uh, with the sounds of goats being slaughtered. <laughs> no, what you mean, Will Smith going da? <laughs> uh, but you can find a ton of them, and it's all just you know South America. And honestly, I don't see the problem with it because these are people that are just going about their normal day of how they uh, kill a goat to eat. Sure. And sure, I guess maybe that shouldn't be, it's pretty bloody, so maybe that shouldn't well, yeah. be on YouTube. But I think with an age restriction, people know what they're watching. They should be able to watch it. It shouldn't be eliminated just because someone, I don't know, because what? It's always because of a kid. It's always because, well, think of the children. Well, yeah, child fucking, shield. Yeah, just, just do the 18 and up to be able to watch this video like they are doing mm -hmm. and leave it up uh, right. so people can watch it. Well, the problem is it's a huge public relations thing for them where the advertisers don't want to see bad press on YouTube because it feels like it taints their brand. So they have to adopt an extremely hypocritical stance when it comes to a lot of this enforcement. Right. Uh, Chris, how, how important is YouTube to cyanide and happiness or that brand? Well, I mean, it's, in, we, uh, we like doing the weekly shorts. It's something that we, you know, have, built up over the years so we can keep it afloat and uh, keep it going. Even if we are censored, we have, you know, plan B's and rip cords to kind of still try to make something work, but we still move, right. we move with the platform. If it gets to be, you know, too much, we just kind of change what we're putting up there and uh, just kind of keep making what we're making. It's just a uh, question of where we put it. So if uh, YouTube closed down tomorrow, uh, not a whole lot would change. We would just okay. need to kind of let people know where to find the shorts. You know, it's one of those things where... Because um, you guys not, are doing pretty good on Twitter and, and on Instagram, and I'm sure your website's still... Is, is your website still pulling the same traffic, or is it kind of get a, um, a spread out over all the other platforms? It, it does pretty good. I'd say it's just uh, slightly less than uh, where we were at in like six or seven years ago when, uh, you mm -hmm. know, going to a website and reading webcomic was more of a thing than just going to the, the comics social media page and things like that. But yeah, right. I mean, honestly, um, this is another reason why diversifying is a good idea because, uh, you know, ad revenue ebbs and flows. Uh, not just for YouTube, but on banner ads and stuff like that. And now uh, our website is, you know, it's back up to the point where it's supporting us almost as much as YouTube. And, uh, and that's a really that's a really beneficial position you're in where you've sort of decentralized your source of income. And you've achieved a status that a lot of people online sort of dream about 
where you've sort of risen above a dependency on mm-hmm. online platforms because now you have your programming on that NBC app. Right. And it's something I begin to notice now that YouTube is getting pretty old, over 12 years old at this point, I believe. Um, a lot of YouTubers started out on YouTube early in the day, like uh, Bo Burnham, for example. Right. And now they've gone in to have mainstream entertainment success. And I begin to notice a lot that once you achieve that level, YouTube sort of starts to treat you a little bit differently than yes. just the regular you get away with who shit. Are, who are only dependent on YouTube. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, there is a there is something they do have to be worried about is uh, everyone who's not familiar with YouTube, you know, what do they think of when they think of YouTube? And if it's uh, you know, if it's not something that really aligns with what they're going for, they're going to try to change it, right? So like when you think of a Tumblr user, you probably have a certain idea in your head. And uh, I think YouTube's fighting back on some of their, you know, especially with PewDiePie being used as an example. Um, you know, they're they're fighting back on that public image because right. I think down there, you know, it's it's a little silly. I think they could take advantage of a lot of the users they've already got, you know, and I think they they could treat them better. But uh, you know, it it is something that they do have to worry about. Well, the thing about, I mean, right, so YouTube is worried, I guess, that uh, everyone on their platform are extremists, you know, uh, right. of some sort or another. But, I mean, obviously that's not the case. You see YouTube has everything, so... Well, it, clearly them, it's not. Right, and them just bowing YouTubers, down to... YouTubers are just regular people. And right. just like how it is in everyday society, extremists only make up a very small percentage but unfortunately they get a lot of the press and uh, it's it's an unfortunate consequence of sort of the media cycle over the past three years where youtubers are beginning to become painted as this sort of extremist hub of people who give really radical opinions and try to convert kids or whatever to sort of the dark side or evil ideologies when it's simply not the case because the vast, vast majority of YouTubers are just regular people. It's true. And, uh, you know, like considering that they're regular people, you can tell that YouTube has kind of made a particular type of internet person who is just a uh, vlogger or person in front of a camera, a single person. You see, you can see them promote to be their face. I mean, especially with stuff like YouTube Rewind and everything, you can see that they're promoting those type of people because it's kind of a brand thing for them. So right. if you're a single person vlogger who's keeping it clean and doing pretty well, they they will they will pick you up and help you out. Well, I don't know if you saw this. Um, uh, there was one person that they were promoting. I think she was in one of the Rewinds. It's a, a trans person named um, Gigi Gorgeous. And uh, I, I found her videos because i tried to upload a song uh that i made called white girls fuck dogs <laughs> and it it consisted of all video clips that i took from youtube itself and uh youtube instantly gave my channel a strike but i typed it in later and i found gg gorgeous uh you know a trans vlogger kind of just sits on a bed and does story time stuff and her stories it, it was her stories are called uh i fucked my dog. Oh my or god! I had sex with a dog, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, this is what they're promoting, um, but it's just branded slightly different. And yeah. she's telling a story about a dog waking her up and fucking her in the face or some shit. <laughs> like you know, how dogs do. <laughs> but right, right, we've all seen dogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but isn't there isn't there a place for like people like cyanide and happiness? They they like it because that's that's the dirty joke. That they can go to, and not saying that it's it's all just dirty, uh, edgy humor, because there's a lot of like well thought out uh, political and social stuff as well. Um, but people want to escape to to that type of content uh, every once in a while. They don't want everything to be clean. They kind of want to see maybe a, a a fun, happy song about nooses right. or <laughs> Bo Burnham, whose video called "Kill Yourself." which is a song where he just explains all the different ways you can kill yourself and why you should do it. 
you know, it has 40 million views on YouTube, but people want to see it because it, it makes them go, oh, who this is bad. Uh, but it, it like adds, um, it's the black to the white, you know, it, it gives them the other option. Right. And I guess YouTube's afraid that that's taking over their website. So they're trying to get rid of it at all. And people will rebel because they're going to be tired of this watered down, cleaned up garbage that they're just trying to promote now. I, something about the way YouTube's been reacting and uh, kind of changing things as of late just kind of reads to me that they're fighting against this lawsuit about their algorithm and everything and trying to uh, basically just keep up appearance, you know? Yeah, I'm not, what's, the, what's the lawsuit? I, I heard that they were um, basically something that kind of helped usher in that adpocalypse is... They they weren't buying a part. I, I forget the names. P- pardon me, but uh, they weren't buying the algorithm that was basically patented uh, to kind of take care of some of their censorship and videos and flagging. And mm-hmm. uh, so, mm-hmm. since you know, there was also a lawsuit that happened with YouTube, I believe, in the late '90s, early 2000s, um, from this from uh, you know all about copyright law. And so is that the Viacom yes. lawsuit? Okay. I, interestingly, I just made a video about that. Oh, right on. Um, yeah. W- what I researched when making that video is that YouTube would be liable for a bunch of copyright violations on their website if it weren't for the content ID system, which is an automated system developed around 2008 that automatically scans uploaded content to a database and matches it with videos that rights holders upload. And if they find a match, then they take down your video for copyright or send a thing to the copyright owner for them to monetize your content. Right. See, Um, I don't, I I don't get that option to monetize it. They only offer me to take it down, which really doesn't make too much sense. I mean, if someone uploads your song or whatever, because I know it just from music, um, that's good. It's just like a, a, it's out there more. It's free advertisement a little bit, uh, unless they're monetizing it. But I just want some of the monetization for it. I don't want to take it down. Right. That's interesting that you don't have the option. I mean, we definitely do have that option. And oh, shit. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people re-upload our stuff. And uh, and I, I get a big kick out of the weird sexual thumbnails they make out of them. <laughs> okay. Like, it makes me Sheesh. makes me a little worried that there's some sort of like stick figure fetish that we're kind of awakening. Uh, hey, there might be. I'm sure there is. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I, sure there is. Somewhere. Hopefully. I mean, I, I saw our rule thirty four and uh, there was some stuff that we drew on there. So <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> but uh I yeah. Think oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I think I've seen like a, a, a stick dong in a couple of the comics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a few. And uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people who re-upload our stuff, and uh, we don't like taking anyone down. Really, we try to, uh, you know, our kind of policy, our virtue, we've kind of tried to stick with is if someone tries to steal our stuff, we make them put it up again, but credit us properly. Okay. And uh, so we do have the option when people like make giant compilations of our stuff and upload it on their channel. We do get the option to have the monetization and then they can keep the video up and get their subs and everything. Yeah, that's and, what and I want. And that's really good because I feel like there's a big cultural difference between a lot of sort of old media and people who came up and got popular through the internet where it's just the mentality of sharing content is completely different. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the the bigger YouTube gets, which it's massive right now, the more scrutiny they're going to be held under. But you got to give uh, YouTube a bit of credit because a lot of, you know, everything that put them in the kind of legal red is when they started paying, you know, people who upload their, their AdSense and everything. And uh, since YouTube's done that, now other websites are going to have to follow that. And Facebook's already started with their ad pre-rolls and... Uh, it, it actually works pretty well. And oh, have they? See, I, I thought Facebook was dead yeah. when it came to their ad system, just where you have to boost, you have to sponsor your posts for your own followers to see it. Uh, obviously, I'm sure Cyanide and Happiness is 
at a huge level on Facebook where there's right. some extra perks. It's it's still it's like the the Facebook did pull the rug out from everyone and uh I mean we have I think I think around 17 million on our Facebook page. Nice. And we don't we reach maybe a percent of them if we just do a post Fuck. without promoting or 1%. But uh, yeah, we tried the video recently since they got all that in order. And uh, the thing is, you know, Facebook chooses what it wants to push out there and promote. Like for a while, mm-hmm. it was live streaming they would push out there and promote. And and now the we we've tried it out with a couple of our normal YouTube shorts, and uh, they do well on Facebook. And you know, Facebook does that organic promotion of it since they're trying to push the video side of. It, even though you know i know facebook's okay. terrible i don't like visiting it but it's uh that's something that you thanks to youtube facebook's held to that regard where you know i feel i feel like facebook and youtube have really diverged not that they were ever even the same remotely in the type of content they produce but the audience on facebook versus a website like YouTube is completely different oh my We're god f- it yeah. is facebook yeah. is is normies and youtube are crazy extremist as far as like uh, the average yeah. facebook user if, if, crazy extremists like monkey jones when, when yeah. people yeah. talk yeah. about they talk about youtube drama on facebook and it's just i just have to fucking close out of the app i'm like god damn i want to just say so much like you motherfuckers don't know what you're talking about uh you're speaking out of school you need to read up on this and not from whatever vox just said yeah uh, well i, I think it's a, it's a huge distinction in um the type of of person who consumes content on the internet where Facebook is really short form content where most people are literally just scrolling through their feed, seeing your video wedged in between like a wedding post and a guy posting a picture of his cat. And it's just like this quick thing they'll glance at for a few seconds and maybe decide to watch the whole thing. But you can't, you can't post more than three minute video on Facebook and expect it to do well. Well, meanwhile on YouTube, Pretty much all the content has to be over 10 minutes nowadays Yeah. in order to appease the algorithm. Right, exactly. Facebook has a lot more of a casual audience. And, you know, with YouTube, you have people who are, you know, mostly veterans of YouTube and are there in in the thick of the drama and everything going around and, you know, obviously have a lot of allegiance towards YouTube. And, you know, Facebook users, they don't give a shit about Facebook. They're just scrolling right. through, you know. They're this ger- there to talk to their friends for a little bit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. People on YouTube are, uh, we are proud of it, and, and uh, despite how much shit we talk about it. Um, right, there's a YouTube community that's a tangible thing that you can witness just by watching videos produced by people who are connected within the community. There's no real Facebook community. No one who makes content for Facebook right. is saying, oh, I'm proud to be posting this Facebook exclusive content. There's no call out culture on Facebook. There's no there's no community standards and ideals to just improve and um, call out people who are detrimental to the image of the site. Exactly. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Wait, so Chris, are you, you, you actually make money from, or uh, your brand makes money from... Uh cyanide happiness posts on video posts on facebook yeah because of would you say like pre-roll ads or something yeah it's very recent they brought in pre-roll ads and uh they pay a percentage and everything and we've just tried it out and uh it's it's working well so you know we'll keep with it uh um, okay it's kind of I figured it was impossible to make money on facebook well it was for a long time but thanks to youtube kind of being the standard there now um you know, Facebook's forced to do that. And so far it's, you know, like Facebook's going to promote the hell out of that video because they want people to see Facebook as a place where you can go and watch Facebook exclusive shit or shit. just regular uploaded video like any other. God, if you think that YouTube's bad with um, censorship, I can't imagine what it's going to be like if Facebook grows their video platform. I mean, now they have what a, a competitor to Netflix uh, Facebook videos or something like that, right? A Facebook Watch. Yeah, it'll, uh, but it'll I, get there. I, I'm I'm pretty sure they're gonna do the same thing where they pull the rug out from under it, and then you have to pay to promote your video. But right now, mm-hmm. it's still the gold rush phase, you know. Shit, I have to look back more into uh, Facebook again. Yeah, the- I think an, another difference between Facebook and YouTube is that 
Facebook, it's been known for a while that their user base is declining. A lot of the people who originally went on Facebook, and especially young people, they have now replaced Facebook with sites like Instagram, which is ironically owned by Facebook right. as well. So <laughs> company-wise, they're not really losing much there. But Instagram and Snapchat have taken a lot of the idea of sharing content with your friends and um, Facebook, the bubble is kind of contracting. So right. they're obligated to try and pull out all the stops and compete using their massive user base with all of these different um, platforms and sort of horizontally integrate all of that stuff. While YouTube, they are still rapidly growing, especially in countries like India, where internet access is becoming a lot more prevalent over the past few years as their infrastructure is improving. Yeah, it's true. It's no sign of slowing down as far as YouTube's growth, you know, but, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've been on YouTube long enough where when they change the algorithm, it rocks the boat, you know, like when they switched over to, uh, you know, watch time and 10 minute plus videos and, and, uh, everything, you know, that, uh, that put, us and as well as a lot of animators in a shitty position right and now it's kind of swung back around to that's really animation yeah. uh, whatever green content or whatever well i think animation as a genre on youtube never really stopped being popular the problem is the sort of new ground style animation where you got all these guys like oni harry partridge psychic pebbles right. all of those guys were getting tons of views back before the algorithm changed because people love online animation it's a huge new frontier oh, yeah. right. and um but after that algorithm change um animation kind of went dead on youtube for a little bit for several years until now you see guys like the odd ones out where it's sort of like animation light mm -hmm. but it's created in a way where those videos do meet those watch time requirements to actually get promoted and once again they're doing huge views right exactly the kind they're kind of animated slideshows more than anything and the whole <laughs> yeah. Yeah. story time sure. thing and I've, I've actually noticed that on the side night and happiness youtube channel where um i remember you guys used to only do shorts but i think after the algorithm changed you've been sort of forced to do compilations yeah and Literally, the only time I ever see your videos promoted to me, it's a compilation and not one of the original shorts. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's true. And it, it, honestly, our compilations just get a a lot more circulation in the recommended feeds and everything. And I I imagine that has to do a little bit with uh, the retention of the watch time. But uh, I that I'm kind of guessing at that point. But yeah, and, the, how the many videos do. are you putting out? Like shorts. Uh, we put out once a week and, uh, now, okay. now we've got other stuff, you know, to kind of bend and flex with YouTube. We've, we do the animated podcast and the, uh, uh, drawing streams as well. Yeah. I was just watching one of those earlier. Uh, so, and how long does it take to even make one of these shorts where you have to make a compilation? Um, I'm not sure how long the compilations are, but it seems like a lot of time has to go into even making enough shorts to be able to make a compilation just for YouTube's algorithm to allow it to be in the recommended or be recommended to other viewers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the amount of time it takes for one short from, uh, you know, concept to script to animation is usually around a month, maybe a little less. Wow. So, uh, you know, we, we work ahead and, uh, kind of just get everything going to put a queue together and you know just in case something happens or youtube does it something weird but it, that's why uh you know when we do get flagged like uh we had an animation where nothing really bad happened in it that just the one guy says shit at the end and you know immediate flag immediate takedown oh, sheesh. Um, are you gonna ever start uh censoring out cuss words I don't think so. I think we're just gonna we yeah. just gonna do what we always do, and uh, you know, if um, we you know if we have to do things like these podcasts and drawing streams to keep it afloat, that's fine. But we're we're not really interested in changing it to kind of be uh, you know whatever YouTube's guidelines want specifically. We're definitely it, you know it ruins it a little bit. It does, and you know we have uh, we invest a lot ahead of time to have you know a lot of time and work and and everything to have the animations ready just to guess if it's going to be you know okay taken down or not how many people are involved in the creation of 
the content for YouTube? The animation, I would say we've got about uh, about eight to 12 of us, depending on if we're bringing in a freelancer for something. But uh, with all the voice acting and the we, you know, make our own music and things like that, it's, yeah, about about a dozen of us. Are you doing the music? We have uh, we have a composer, uh, Steve Lemon. He's been with us for you know since we started doing animations. Like you, if you heard the "Waiting for the Bus" theme, that's that's all Steve Lemon there. And then uh, we got my uh, uh, good buddy and sound engineer Ben, who does a lot of our rock and metal stuff. And uh, any any of the songs that are kind of in between, it'll usually be someone like myself or Dave who will do the music. And so, uh, yeah, man, that's it's inspiring. Um, just or interesting too. Just talking to someone who you've really got it figured out. Like you're running this like a professional business. I mean, obviously, it's it's showing because of uh, the success of the brand and everything. But God, uh, every department, rather than you know you having to do it all yourself, which would just slow down progress right. of, of being able to put out content. Yeah, yeah, it would. And you know, we we like we like doing it this way. We like making lots of shorts and then kind of get it where it's you know can snowball a little bit and build up and uh yeah so we you know we make a we make a big effort to just get stability because right. we we don't like completely changing our content we just like kind of adding more yeah right, so we're approaching almost the one hour mark here so we might be looking to wrap this up if you guys don't have much more to say. Ooh, I would like to ask Chris, though, what sort of the future of Cyanide and Happiness is, because we talked about Garfield earlier, and that <laughs> strip has been in the in the newspapers for over 40 years right. at this point, I believe. And as much shit as people give Garfield nowadays, where it's kind <laughs> of a meme for just being so mediocre. How dare uh, you? <laughs> I read... Yeah, I read a lot of Garfield when I was younger, and yeah, same. a lot of the, the I early can tell by your are, sense of humor. are quite good. <laughs> yeah, I love lasagna, and I hate Mondays. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hey, there it is. But the the problem is, is, is something like the same thing as The Simpsons, where the longer you have something on, eventually it gets to a point where you become creatively bankrupt, and you've done every possible iteration of whatever your characters can do. So I was just wondering looking to the future, how you plan to um, navigate around that, I guess. Right. Uh, you know, that's, that's always, that's always the question. And for us, we kind of just uh, go about it naturally. Like uh, we, we like putting ourselves in new kind of mediums because it's, a, it's kind of fun for us. It's new and fresh to write. Like we we're doing tabletop games, you know, like card yeah, games. Or whatnot, yeah. And then now we're moving on to video games and, and uh, we've done some other shows on the side that are not Cyanide and Happiness related. Like uh, we had one called Purgatoni, and uh, uh, we did we helped our friends uh, Chase and Ryan have a platform for their Channel Eight animations, and you know, kind of we we want an umbrella out where we can have you know not only can we uh, basically do what we're doing and kind of move the direction we want you know, if after video games, you know, whatever it be, we've, we've toyed around with the idea of doing a musical stuff like that. And, um, basically, um, after all that and everything, we also want to be able to kind of build out a safe hub for animation on places like YouTube. Like, that's uh, awesome. Right. We tried it with the, with the, with the psychic pebbles and onis and hellbenders. And, uh, we did the channel eight animations and, you know, basically just trying to uh have that stability where if something gets brought down by youtube's ever-changing landscape oh well you know well th like the hardest thing um uh that i've always found with dependency on youtube is because it's it seems a lot more difficult nowadays to establish yourself on a website on your own website rather than to fall in and try to uh, build up a following on um, something like Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. So then once they all start changing, it, if you're late to the game, it's like, well, fuck, what do I do? Like, how am I supposed to get people to my website now? Am I just going to be posting videos and kind of shouting into an empty room and hoping, 
you know, people will show up. Obviously, animation, you're doing, you know, daily comic strips, so that's always going to keep people coming in. Right. Um, I don't really know where I was going with that. It's just like, are you saying for a beginner, how would they kind of get someone uh, like, or is get some traffic to their website? It is to an extent. The thing is, it's just kind of more spread out now. Like definitely do the social medias and, you know, uh, like if you got a storefront, do it on your website, you know, to have a, uh, have an extension of your website for it. And, uh, you know, like I would, there's not a whole lot of reason to have a website and actually have it be something that will kind of support unless you're doing content on there and you kind of got to get people used to visiting that, you know, for your content. Yeah, they have to put it in their bookmark bar or else they'll probably never visit unless they see a promotion of it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Right. And, you know, you you got like, you know, say you you got stuff that keeps being taken down from YouTube, well... You know, put it on your website. Maybe it's a members yeah. only thing. I uh, just I just recently did that. All the videos that YouTube doesn't want up, I'm just uploading them onto the website. And Mumkey obviously started his website as well. Um, well, so yeah, I was worried about it with uh, music. So, you know, I I make money from selling music, right. and it's uh it's enough to live on that if YouTube uh just completely deleted my channel. I could keep making money from it, but I don't know how long that'll last because my relevancy will will decrease. Uh, people will forget to even look up these songs or type it into Spotify or any of these streaming services. Um, and so that's the big thing. Is like YouTube's the big promoter. Even if I didn't make any money at all from AdSense, it's just the reach that it has. It's true. That that that's the, like the biggest concern for potentially having the channel deleted right exactly and i mean youtube i don't think there's many places that can really contend with youtube i mean that's one of the most damaging things for you monkey i'm sure is just like (laughs) just trying to because you know like youtube hasn't done what facebook and instagram and even twitter now do which is oh don't worry we'll provide the things you want to see based on your taste you know uh like you get a pretty good indication you know, aside from YouTube's slip ups with how the recommended uh, videos work and everything, um, but it's YouTube's great for promotion. It's great for just seeing a good number of, you know, an accurate number of how many people are watching and responding and everything. And uh, well, I, I would I would be the one person that would uh, my conspiracy conspiratorial nature about my own channel. I would disagree because I I get terrible 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 views. Uh, despite my subscriber count. And so I, I have to either assume that, you know, say I have a million subscribers, uh, I put a video out, and I check the analytics, and based on view count, it only looks like about 5% or less people are watching any of the content. And I'm going, damn, did I fucking, do I just suck now? <laughs> or, like, nobody, why'd you subscribe to my channel if you don't want to watch any of the videos I'm putting out? So I'm not sure if that's just natural thing, like everyone's seeing it in their subscription box and they're deciding not to click on it. Or if it's not even going out to all subscription boxes, because obviously my channel is controversial and it's uh, had its share of, of strikes and flags and whatnot. So maybe it's not suitable for the majority of people that are subscribing. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just not sure. I I think there is a kind, I think YouTube does have a white list of like, who they kind of have some of these organic promotions work for and who they don't. I remember for a while, uh, I think last year you would, uh, your video would get hit pretty hard if you had Patreon in the description. Right. Oh, right. Shit. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Any links to an outside thing. Um, yeah, it would it'd get throttled or whatever. Yeah. You have to apply to basically be able to link to Patreon. Um, or there was an application at the time and, uh, you know, they keep changing that that shit, so it's it's good to good to cast a wide net. <laughs> well, Chris, is there anything that you're promoting right now? I know you just went on kind of a tour. Oh, oh, um, Jesus! Well, we're doing a lot. I would say if you want to uh, check out our Twitch, we've been doing some live drawing on there, and uh, we're pretty new to Twitch, but it's it's honestly been a fucking blast for us, where we kind of sketch the same way that we do at con- when we go to conventions. Where, uh, was it twitch.tv slash uh ex- i believe it's cyanide underscore and underscore happiness no more underscores 
I'm gonna double check that because it's new. And uh, Dude, I'm, I'm fucking dumb. We'll, I can't. We'll I can't put it in the description. Yeah, yeah. We'll put show. all the links in the uh, description. Wrong. It's uh, twitch.tv slash explosum. Explosum. That's right. Like our website. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm following you right now. And if Sweet, you want to watch um, somebody uh, epically fail at doing a drawing live stream, go check out Rusty Gage on <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> Every single time, it's a catastrophic failure. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you doing the comic drawing on there? Yeah, well, I start out doing that, and I realize it's very difficult to draw a comic <laughs> while trying to entertain people, because I, I don't talk. Right. And, and, and his internet I'm, connection won't let him do it. Yeah, yeah, my internet connection keeps cutting out, so every couple of minutes or seconds even, uh, it just starts freezing up and everyone <laughs> leaves. I'm like, God damn it, Twitch. <laughs> It's not Twitch, it's my internet, but whatever. Well, just just eat some spaghetti or something while you're doing it, and you'll have an audience. <laughs> slurp it up. Yeah, exactly. Play with some Legos. <laughs> <That'll be entertaining. laughs> well, well, sweet, All right, man. Chris, well, it's been nice having you on. Yeah, we thank really you so much. I really appreciate the insight. And I didn't on... think we'd get anybody successful on this show, so I'm glad that you uh, hopped on. <laughs> well, I'm only <laughs> successful until YouTube says otherwise. Yeah, but, I know that right. feeling. Yeah, and unfortunately... Uh, yeah, nobody watches this podcast, so um, oh, thank God. It, it might not bring any new fans in, but hopefully it does. <laughs> okay, well, my security... That's a hell of a send-off for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since nobody's listening, my social security is 5227. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>